phishing scams are getting so much better. It, it happens to everybody. The most vulnerable are older people who don't know tech as much as everybody else. One thing that I see has been a big scam lately is where they call relatives pretending that it's you and are like, hey, I'm stuck or something. Or I just yeah, got I need $5,000. I need... No reputable, com no, no Chase Bank or Norton Security Virus is gonna be asking for freaking money back on on Google Play cards or, or Target gift cards. Like that's the number one way, like it's a scam. This lovely topic is something that uh, everybody is going to either need to know or already has some knowledge about it, but it's cybersecurity and, and scams like phishing scams and emails, text messages. Uh, I've been seeing them pop up on Instagram DMs and comments, Facebook, they're all over, right? Um, if you haven't seen there's actually a movie that just came out uh, action-packed jason statham movie called the beekeeper and that's what it's about i actually mm. watched it on the flight to it was good to california it was you know typical jason statham blowing up action pack fighting guns all that oh so he transitioned into like being a thief but doing no, no, no. it through cyber security no, no 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 he was a he was called a beekeeper and it was a secret part of the government that kept order throughout time, uh -huh. right? And he was a retired beekeeper and he rented a space from this older lady who got a, a, a phishing scam okay. through her email and they took several million dollars from her which was an account that she managed for for somebody else i think it was a charity she ended up <clears throat> taking her life and he got pissed and he went after whoever did it whoever did it okay. and don't uh, spoil too much of the movie here but and the, the I'll, I'll end that that the uh the woman's daughter was an fbi agent who was you could put it together basically okay um, but yeah, it, it happens to everybody. The most vulnerable are older people who don't know who don't know tech as much as everybody else, right? And even now, phishing scams are getting so much better where it'll act like it's your bank, whether it's Chase Bank, BMO, uh, Bank of America, whatever you'll get an email saying it looks exactly, you put it side by side with an official chase or whatever email saying fraudulent activity, log in, uh -huh. change your password. It's not working. Yeah, you're logging in, and it's that, not working. It's not working. You're gonna click change password. And that link that you click is from the scammer. And they know your password. And now they know your information. Or you're on the phone with them saying like, they contacted you saying, oh, they're part of the antivirus that's been programmed to your computer. Something happened. You've been overcharged for it. Let us refund you the money. And then the whole premise is like, oh, we need to send you a $50 refund because you overpaid for it, which you never over you never paid for in the beginning. Right. They're going to send you a receipt that looks like you did. And then they're going to get this whole transaction through you. They're going to try, they'll get access to your computer live. And when they go to send over the refund of $50, they're going to send you five grand or 50 grand and be like, oh my God, I over, I hit an extra zero, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to lose my job. Can you send, send the difference back? And that's where they get hundred thousand dollars off the credit card if exactly. possible. exactly okay exactly yeah this stuff is being like it's just becoming more and more popular nowadays and i feel like also when people are tighter on money it even happens more so because now 
the unethical people try to that's how they want to make money you know right. they're like oh, i don't have money to pay rent i'm gonna try to steal it you know so it's like the tougher the times the more of these uh things happen and i think now like even in our company like part of the whole job is making sure employees are not clicking on things like that because right. you and i are pretty advanced in this field and we know pretty much 99.9 percent .9 of of all the scams and how they look like right but then there's still some that are like even we question like mm, this looks this looks legit you know this is like either the best one we've ever seen or we're still not sure if it is one or it isn't and you have to like double check somehow question everything if you think even if you believe that it's your bank Mm -hmm. The best thing you're, uh, if let's say you get a call and they pretend that it's your bank and it could even pop up on your caller ID as Chase Bank or BMO, whatever, your best bet, hang up, go find their call number, whatever it is. Verify. They could even spoof the number. Type it in yourself on your end. Don't let it come in. Don't get a call from somebody coming right. in because they'll spoof the number and make it look like it is Chase Bank calling you. End the call. Find an actual number. Don't click call back because you're just going to call back that spoof number. All right. Type in the number yourself, call it, and then talk to the agent and verify, did you guys just call me? Yeah. And see. If yes, then okay, you're fine. If not, which most of the time it's not, you'll know and you just saved yourself from getting scammed. Yeah, you have to be really careful because you could go on Google, type in something and, you know, Chase Bank or any kind of bank you're looking for and you still might find the wrong number, you know, right. and are calling someone else. So go like, into your local branch yeah, and I talk to a personal banker or a teller and have them do it with you. You have to be careful because this stuff is like big time. You, you, might, you might even money. think that, you know so much and you've seen all of it until this stuff evolves daily. They are so good at changing this stuff up that it's now it's going through Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And I mean, the biggest way to tell is like, all right, send it back in Target gift cards or Google Play Store cards. No reputable come no, no Chase Bank or Norton Security Virus is going to be asking for freaking money back on on right. Google Play cards or or Target gift cards. Like that's the number one way. Like it's a scam. Some of these are so noticeable, but then again, to you and me, because there's so many people that truly just fall for it. They don't know, right. which is like, how can you blame someone when you don't really know you? Maybe this is your first time having an email, you know, which there's still plenty of people that probably don't have an email. Tomorrow, they might be setting one up and a year from then they might get their first, you know, link sent to them where they if they click it, everybody takes over their whole computer and whatever's on it. Right. Right. So it's like I feel like that one is the one that's the most popular with the link clicking. And oh, yeah, that one gets a lot of people, I feel like. So when it comes to links, I feel like if you're going to click a link, you always have to make sure that you are doing some kind of, you know, verification, whether that email where it came from, you know, is, is a legit email um, or, or something. You just can't be clicking links. This is another big thing on top of it to always have two factor authentication authentication set up on every account um whether it's an ex an app or you know send the message to your phone number or call mm -hmm. or another email that's one thing second which i know very few people do one person who surprisingly does it the other way is my dad he does not repeat the same password for an account more than twice oh, wow. he's got different passwords for damn near every account he has which is crazy or he has a rot i would say have if you're gonna have passwords have if it's banking don't have your email password and your banking password the same that i don't and for sure. have at least five different passwords that you use mm -hmm. and, and never and never do when it when it comes to digits never do your birthday 
or your home address. Right. And uh, never keep it at the bare minimum characters. Always go more. Always yeah, don't be lazy on don't those. Don't be things. lazy. That's the biggest thing. Like it's the simplest, but it's, the it's easiest gonna to guess. save you so much because if there is a data breach and some of your information does get leaked or stolen. They can access everything. They can access everything, especially if you have the same password for everything. And right. if your password's password or your last name, and you have your pin codes is your birthday, then you're screwed. Yeah, you're, you're screwed. Because that's like public information probably could be found somewhere, right? Um, one thing that I see has been a big scam lately is where they call relatives yep. pretending that it's you and are like, hey, I just I'm got stuck arrested. or something. Or, I just yeah, got arrested. I need $5,000. Bill money. Can you wire it to... Do send it to my uh -huh. PayPal and with AI like they could copy good, your voice. Right, they could copy your voice. Spoof your number, copy your voice, and again, the best way to make sure that you're not being scammed out of that is Call hang person. up, hang up, and again, don't click that number that just called you. Type in the phone number again, exactly like type in the phone number and call and be like, did you just call me? And if yeah, then obviously you right. know it's real. And I've if it's heard not, about this one specifically, I think three times already in the last like maybe six to 12 months. That it's happened to That somebody. it's happened to someone I know. Most recent was my grandpa in Poland saying that he got a call that I called him. No shit. Yeah, that I called him that I need, I think $5,000 because I'm in an accident or something. And he figured it out right away somehow. But at first he like obviously panicked and he thought, oh, wow. But then it kind of clicked. Something was off and then he started going off on him or something. But yeah. And your grandpa's in his 70s, 80s? 80s. 80s. And see, like he knew. I mean, obviously he knows you. Yeah. And knows your life circumstances that that would never be. A Why would I go to him right. for the money probably overseas over so many different people, people quicker here. here, right? Yeah, that's probably what made him like figure it out. Like there's no way, you know? If you lived in Poland, time zone's the same. You're now closer to the person. Yeah, he might have sent it. Might have sent it. But now that he's overseas, seven hour time difference, he knows mm -hmm. your parents are here, I'm here, other people are here. It's like... Yeah, so it's like it's happening so people have to be careful and it's hard for us to like say what's next because there's always going to be something that they're going to be trying to do as soon as you know technology evolves there is a new thing that they're trying to take advantage of right at the beginning because it's the easiest like the ai thing right now with the voice i think that's going to get a lot of people when we did the ai episode and we said that we want to see really harsh regulations come in I think with AI, the first regulations that need to come in is that it can't be used for voice and it can't be used for for images. Honestly, I know it's it's a touchy subject there. Where it's like, well, we, now you can't use it for that or this, but it's like we need it to stop it somewhere because it's yeah, it's gonna, gonna screw people over. Yeah, but hey, like anything new, first people are gonna get screwed over before regulation and rules come into play you know because it's kind of hard to oversee all the problems that it could kind of you know have before you actually see them like some of them yeah you could kind of clearly tell but then there's always the ones that just happen and then you're like oh wow i didn't know that this could happen you know right so but yeah i mean and if you want to learn more uh or curious, there are guys on YouTube who actually get the scammers back. And in one in particular that I subscribe to is the channel Scammer Payback. Uh -huh. And his name is Pierogi. And he actually uh -huh. pretends to be scammed. He uses a voice editor to be an old lady or an old man and pretends to go with the scam. But what he does is... He's very tech savvy. He gets access to their computers 
and now he starts messing with them. And what he does is he first things first is he deletes all their files. He gets access to their computers and deletes everything to make them screwed over. And then once they start to pick up on that, he might not be this person that's getting scammed. He's like, well, hi, Philip. Are you in Chicago? I see that you're in Chicago right now. And I see that Michael's sitting right next to you because he even gets access to their webcam and sees exactly what they're doing. So there are people who are getting back at the scammers and trying to recover the money that has been stolen from people, finding those people and getting back to them. Mm. What they also do is they give out tips, kind of what we just did, but more in depth on things. And if you want to learn more, I would definitely go check out Scammer Payback and anybody else who, who does recovery and gives tips on cybersecurity and phishing. We definitely need more people like that. For sure. Like people exposing these things like CoffeeZilla, who's exposing the gurus and stuff right. like that. Hopefully we're heading in the right direction Yeah. Um, with certain things like that. But I think that's going to be a, a good topics to talk about for people to get educated about these things. Right. Cause, and it's, it's all about helping each other out. If we can't, uh, if it's not financially, it doesn't have to be financially, but in a sense, it is becoming financially because what you learn from this helps you save potential money that you could get from being scammed mm -hmm. by somebody, right? So again, our big thing is always helping out other people and the biggest is with information. C cybersecurity and phishing scams is, is just gonna get more, more in depth, crazier, a lot better for the scammers to trick you but just staying on top of these things and knowing how to protect yourself to prepare yourself in a way yeah is is best now question do you have you ever been scammed by any luckily like that? i have not been scammed directly where i've clicked a phishing link or given up money i have been a victim of uh a data breaches, breaches on multiple Same. multiple platforms, platforms. Um, and I've had to go and reset my passwords. And actually, now I am in the process of doing changing up passwords and doing multiple different passwords. Like, don't have the same ones for yeah. I make it for your habit. emails and your banking, and don't have your banking passwords all the same. Like have them different, you know, because I think that's what people should do. Always change their passwords every couple of months or a year. That's what I do. I always go back to my password, change them at least once every year. You know, I, I know nobody wants to do it. I definitely don't want to do it, but I think it's a it's a good thing to do, especially the important accounts, you know, right? Um, because I've never been duped like that, scammed uh, by anybody, but except those breaches. But you never know, like these things are getting so good. You don't want your account taken, your bank account taken. I mean, actually, I want, I had my credit card um, stolen. Well, they didn't, I had the card, but someone had to gotten the number somehow because remember we lived together and then one day I wake up, I'm like, oh, wow, spend like 12K on hotels or something right yeah. next to us in Chicago. I'm like, oh, it wasn't there we go. No, it wasn't <laughs> me. I'm like, well, if I'm gonna give 12K to someone, I'd rather go and sleep in those hotels right. you know, than having someone do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it slipped my mind. Another great way, if it's not you outright giving out your information, like sending money to somebody, lock your credit score, lock your credit. Mm -hmm. uh, go to the big three, yep. Experian, TransUnion, and uh, I forgot the third one, but you know the third one. Lock no. your credit. Make sure to lock your credit when you're not. You have it locked? I do now. Because yeah, well, we have it locked too. Just had uh, something happen at work and it it frightened us. So, yeah, we locked our, our credits are locked. And that's the thing. Like if you're not if you're not actively looking to open a line of credit with a credit card, if you're not buying a car, if you're not getting a mortgage, you're not doing or or looking to rent something like a an apartment yep there's they no need, need to run the credit yeah anytime you need your credit run then all you have to do 
is call right before you go in to get your credit run, let them run it, and then lock it right back up right after. And it takes like 10 minutes or something. So, right. Because we've done say, it a bunch of times. Safely do it, give yourself an hour. Yeah, but before, it's quick. But it's quick. And 99% of the time, you're not going to be running your credit check. So like, right. why do you why need to leave it, it open? Exactly. So those are just a couple tips, I think, that um, we could share here in this episode that I feel like could be beneficial that maybe people don't know about. So yeah. have to be extra careful. Absolutely. And if you have been a victim of a scam and you have a story or if you have another tip, go ahead and leave us a comment. Let us know and share that with everybody.